In the intro, we talked about the volatility that we've seen on the Indian exchanges this year, not unlike what we've seen elsewhere in the world. Uh, we have divergent rates environment here in Japan. They've gone negative, much like the ECB has done, while the U.S. is starting to hike. India cut rates four times last year. How do you see these divergent rate environment around the world? I think overall, uh, the world is looking at a quite a deflationary situation. And that's why the central banks are trying to prop up the demands and so on and so forth. And Indian markets particularly are more in sympathy with uh, the rest of the world. So irrespective of the interest rate uh, framework, uh, if the markets go down across the world, India would go down in terms of its markets. Although the economy may continue to grow, the markets would perform uh, in sympathy with the rest of the markets because large part of our markets are now uh, getting either net inflow or net outflow, which is overwhelming from the foreign shores. And that basically determines whether the Indian markets go up or down. And that has nothing to do with India's economic growth or uh, the monetary policy. It's basically more to do with the rest of the world. How do you see the headwinds, though, in the Indian economy this year? They had 7.6% GDP growth in the fourth quarter. I believe the full year target is for 7.3%. But you're also in an environment where you're lowering interest rates, and they're waiting for the budget on February 29th. How critical is that for potential monetary and fiscal policy? For me, India would continue to grow at 7.5%, 8% going forward for many years because of a variety of factors, including demographics. Demographics is very interesting. At 50% of 1.2 billion population is below 25, and that's going to remain young for the next 30 years. So effectively, that's the next um, engine for growth for the world. Uh, and uh, if you can have monetary policy and fiscal policy, which are kind of stimulating uh, the growth, that would probably add up 1 or 2 percent uh, more into uh, the overall growth. But overall, I think Indian economy is uh, kind of set to grow at much faster pace than the rest of the world. You need to also worry about uh, how the rest of the world is doing. And then there is an inflation, uh, deflation kind of a trade-off. If you have a deflationary situation in the wholesale prices, so you may grow at, say, 75 uh, and if there is a deflation of 4% in prices, it actually looks like as if you are going much slower uh, compared to when you are having an inflation of, say, 10% and you add up uh, seven and a half, then you are going, growing at 17 and a half for, uh, on a notional basis. And so uh, the perception may vary uh, in people's mind because of uh, the actually deflation being there. But overall, I think India is going to grow at much faster pace than the rest of the world. What's, What's your outlook then for the stock market, and what are the challenges for you? I mean, you have the world's fastest exchange, I believe, the BSE, but you're also facing challenges from high-frequency trading. What, what are the biggest challenges you for see? For me, I mean, we, we are the fastest in the world with six microseconds response time. The nearest fast exchange is, I think, 60 microseconds something. Uh, and I don't see uh, the HFT as challenges because we can take up to 500,000 orders in a second uh, with six microseconds response time. You can take up uh, probably 10 times more with minor uh, modification in hardware. And we People use... coming in and out of positions pretty fast, aren't they? I mean, uh, our order trade ratio could go up to 200 is to 1 uh, and more. And so we are kind of used to taking that. And more and more orders are better for liquidity. So effectively, uh, we don't consider HFT as bad uh, altogether. But if, uh, the society uh, has uh, apprehensions. Of course, Flash Boys yeah, plays yes. in everyone's minds. And there have been... Uh, kind of allegations of uh, spoofing and manipulations using yeah. algorithms and so on and so forth. So we need to uh, be on our toes in terms of surveillance and check check out any malpractices there are. But effectively, uh, we are uh, not providing any specific or special rights to any HFT players in India uh, by regulations or otherwise. And so we are a little more insulated from the HFT uh, abuse, uh, as you may call it, uh, compared to the rest of the world. More specifically on the stock exchange, I know you have a stated goal. You want this to be a $20 trillion stock market by, what, 2035? You're $1.4 trillion right now. Um, how are you going to achieve that, which is a pretty lofty goal, and what are your IPO plans? Uh, I think the 20 trillion goal is keeping in mind India's also goal, the economic goal of reaching 20 trillion dollars of uh, GDP. So if you have a, a kind of a GDP to market capitalization uh, ratio of one is to one, you end up achieving that. And 2035 is around 20 years from now. Yeah. Uh, if you end up growing at seven and a half, 10 percent, uh, there's a chance that you will reach uh, 20 trillion dollars. The other part is today, despite uh, 
30 million investors investing through uh, BSE. Uh, we have only reached 2% of India because India has yeah. 1.2, 1.3 billion people. And so if we reach out to, uh, say, 10 times more, uh, that is instead of three, 30 million, if we go to 300 million people investing, we would be reaching out uh, to more, more people and also increase the market cap. Very, very quickly, though, IPO on the national stock exchange this year, right? Uh, BSE would uh, list itself on NSE as soon as the permissions come.